Why do we create a plan? We create a plan so that we know what steps we're going to do. If you are building a house, you create a blueprint. If you're going to make something in the kitchen, you have a recipe. There are all sorts of ways that we use to plan things, and some of them have different degrees of depth. For programming at the level that we're at, there are two standard ways of planning. One is pseudocode, the other is flowcharting. I've found in the past that my students will go overboard on the planning or they will write the program first and then write the plan afterward, which really doesn't help you at all. Progr planning should be high level. There are a couple of ways to do the plans, and I want to show you some examples for the sample that I did for your Mad Libs program. Now, this is just a reminder, this was my script. It's based on Mary Had a Little Lamb. Now, I, everybody who does pseudocode does it a little differently. Each person has their own style. I like to mimic the way a program is written. To me it's important to find out what the variables are going to be. So I always list my variables first and I'll just list them by type strings and if it's a com complicated program I'll put in notes next to it name of person. I usually don't have to do that on a small program like this but if I get a really complex program I'll put notes next to my variables. Again, the plan is to help you to make your program easier to write. So the level of detail is up to you. I want you to think of pseudocode like you're writing a paper for an English class. Everybody should have at this point done an outline before writing a paper. You should not have to write a detailed line for every sentence you're going to have in your paper, but you should probably have a line in your outline for every paragraph that you're going to have. And that's really how I want you to do your planning for programming. You don't need to do either pseudocode or flowcharting line by line, though it is acceptable and proper to do so, generally because it's for your own planning purposes, going slightly high, higher level up to a paragraph level or equivalent is easier to understand and you don't want to take just as long to plan as you do to program. Though actually planning can be more important. Many students start with their plan by doing a line by line plan which is still shorter than the program. So example one, start, get name, get animal, get color, get now, display poems with variable input, end. A shorter version, get variables from user, display poem with user input. They both tell you the same thing, it just doesn't list each variable one at a time. But since I've already listed the variables, you don't really need to. Now the way that translates into a flow chart, and I've done both flow charts as well, you start, and you always start with the program name, which would be Mad Libs, and then you'd have get name, get animal, get color, get noun, display poem, and end. And let's review what these shapes mean. This is just your start and stop shape. And this refers to data, which is either input or output. Output could be to a printer, it could be sounds, it could be to a display, which is what we're doing here. So everything we're doing, because we're not really processing anything, is either input or output. That's a little more complex than it absolutely has to be. You can do a very simple pl flow chart for this program. Mad Libs, Get Variables, Display Poem. And that really is enough. That to me is the paragraph level of planning. You should do whatever you're most comfortable with. Most students start here, but end up here as the programs get more complicated. And that's also a good way to go.